My name is Tom Sullivan. I worked for Control Demolition Incorporated, CDI, the top rated explosive demolition firm in the world, owned by the Loazzo family during the years surrounding 9-11. Uh, I worked for them as an explosives loader for two and a half years. As an explosives loader, my job was to place explosives in the buildings to prepare them for demolition. I was licensed while in New York by the New York Fire Department to handle explosives. And I worked on major projects such as Seattle Kingdom, the Free River Stadium, Philadelphia Naval Hospital, and the and Keyspan gas holders in New York, among others. I currently live on the East Coast. Isn't it true that anybody can uh, implode a building straight down just by placing a bunch of explosives around? There are many uh, steps that you need to take. The first off is uh, you have to weaken the building, and that's after a lot of studies have gone into how the building is uh, built in the first place. To weaken the building, that means the staircase, uh, all the staircases have to be uh, cut at intervals. Uh, the uh, firewalls have to be removed. Electri uh, the uh, elevator shafts have to be cut and the rails cut as well as the cars themselves removed. And then you have to move to the support columns on the particular load floors. And those are cut by a torch uh, for two reasons. First, to weaken them and also to uh, allow for charges to be placed uh, it, um, onto the structure or onto the columns themselves. And that essentially um, reduces their strength by about 20 percent. And even with all of that work being done to weaken this building, it still remains safely standing so we can work, continue to work in it. The story that just a few columns uh, can cause a synchronized global collapse, an implosion, is, well, that's just nonsense. Uh, after the prepping work has been done, then it's time to load the building. And in the, and in the case of a steel frame building, that means we load them with RDX uh, cutting charges, which are loaded with individual delays, sometimes as many as two to three different delays on a given floor. So you have to understand the work is complex and precise and requires years of experience. We were told by the NIST report that fire uh, caused one Build, one column to fail, and from that point, we had all we had a global collapse of the building in a classic implosion. I don't see how this could actually happen in real life. When we load a building, on a, we have to have all the support columns on a given load floor fail at the same time, within milliseconds of one another, and therefore the uh, the, the entire building comes down in a synchronized uh, implosion. So I think this notion of a, of a one column causing uh, one column failure causing an entire building to implode in, uh, in a synchronized fashion is just nonsense. Looking at the building, it wouldn't be a problem once you gained access to the uh, elevator shafts. Then a team of loading experts would have access to all the core columns and beams. The rest could be accomplished at that point by just the right kind of explosives for the job at hand. The choices are many out there. Well, I've worked on, on buildings, steel frame buildings, where essentially you load only the bottom third of the building, and that causes the building to implode. Yes, we uh, have loaded buildings uh, in that fashion where we uh, the, just the uh, core support columns are loaded, and we don't necessarily have to load the outside perimeter uh, columns to have this building come down successfully. With steel frame buildings, you don't have to load all the floors to have a successful implosion. Only the bottom third of the, of the building needs to be uh, loaded to right. have a successful implosion. For instance, the, I worked on a, a building in uh, Hartford, Connecticut, the CNG building, where we did just that. You wouldn't need miles and miles of debt cord. You could have used wireless remote detonators, and they have been available for years. Um, you need only look at an action movie to see them in use, and of course the military has them as well. Uh, contractors don't use them, on the other hand, because they're just too expensive. Well, you wouldn't have found steel casings to be left in the rubble. They haven't been used for years. What we use now is RDX uh, uh, copper jacketed shape charges, and when they're initiated, there's nothing left of those uh, charges. And in the case of thermite, well, thermite self-consuming ch uh, cutting charges have been around since they first patented in 1984. So there would be nothing left in the debris pile except some uh, residue of molten iron. Well, the key word here is controlled demolition. And I emphasize the word controlled. 
we use careful placement of the charges. They're always focused and precise. And we're just not talking about setting off a bomb here. Plus, the amount and type of explosives can pretty well take care of any collateral damage. With uh, any implosion, you don't hear one massive uh, boom sound. What you do hear is smaller explosions going off, uh, which leads up to the implosion of the building. Mr. Sunder of NIST has said that you would, if this had been a controlled demolition, you would have heard a large, massive bomb going off, a big boom. He says what in reality happens with a controlled demolition is you hear a successive progressive smaller waves of smaller explosions going off and that leads to the successful implosion of the building. In the case of thermite cutting charges, you would have heard far less noise since they are worked by uh, thermal heating, melting of the steel rather than an explosive cutting as in RDX charges. Now with, regarding the criticism that this couldn't have been a controlled demolition because there, the building uh, apparently exhibited a bit of lean as it came down. Well, in my experience, this isn't exactly precise. The buildings can lean a bit as they come down with any implosion. I knew from day one that this was a controlled event. And, and why I did that is because simply looking at Building 7, you have a, a sudden collapse of the building. It's fairly symmetrical as it comes down. There's the classic kink, which means that the center core fails first. And you can see that on the video. And the building falls near free fall. So I really honestly didn't believe this from day one because this is the way buildings classically come down with uh, a controlled demolition. I want to emphasize that I in no way represent CDI. And what I have to say is based solely on my own working experience and uh, training while working for them. This NIST report is very suspect because I would have expected in a classic implosion as I've seen numerous times, is the core to fail. It's essentially, what I'm saying is the core, I would expect the center of the building to start moving first. And then as the, as the implosion progresses, then the sides come in, then the rest of the building is involved. So this idea that it's started on one side and all of a sudden the core starts moving at this, as this thing progresses is, uh, just doesn't make sense. Uh, what I saw, it was a classic implosion. The center of the core, the penthouse area, starts to move first, and then the building uh, follows along with it. Um, so this the idea that the, uh, it started on one corner from one column off in the, off in the side, uh, therefore the core was involved starting from that corner, just doesn't make sense. It's not how it works. Well, uh, again, if you listen to the, the, the testimony of people on the ground, uh, they're reporting exactly what I would have expected. I mean, I've been to all the implosions that I, when I was working at CDI. Again, as you point out, I photographed them. Um, and what you hear uh, is uh, waves of, 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 of explosions going off, not one massive big boom, but you hear boom, 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 boom. Uh, go back and listen to the tapes of the, of the police officers and people on the ground They're, and the firemen as well. They're reporting exactly what I would expect. You're hearing boom, 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 boom as these different floors start to uh, fail. So uh, again, it, what I'm hearing from what people were there is exactly what I would have expected. Uh, you don't break glass. So collateral damage, windows breaking uh, for, for blocks around, that kind of thing, uh, it, just, it just doesn't happen if it's a controlled demolition.